Number one says the population of a town is growing exponentially and can be modeled by the equation f of t shown here. The population is measured in thousands and time is measured in years since 1950. So what was the population of the town in 1950? And so that's just going to be our initial amount here of 42, remembering that it's measured in thousands. So this is going to be a population of 42,000 in that initial year. Part B says, what's the approximate percent increase of the population each year? So for this, we can take a look at the um, growth factor. So if we just isolate this part and we look at E to the 0.015T and we just do one year, okay? So I'm just going to do the T as one to see what happens or what the growth factor is for one year. And when you type this into your calculator, you get 1.01511. And then remember that this one represents 100%. So we can just think of subtracting the, you know, if it stayed the same population, if it got back, it's 100%. So all we're really looking at here is this part of the decimal, kind of ignoring that one or thinking of subtracting one off. And so then we would want to look at this decimal as a percent, and that's going to be our percent increase. So then just multiply this by 100 or move the decimal over two places, and you get 1.511%. So that's how much it's growing each year. So according to this model, what um, was the population in 1960? So now we're just going to take this equation um, or this function here, and we're going to plug in 10 since 1960 is 10 years since 1950. Okay, so 1950 was the year zero, so 1960 will be year 10. And so we'll do F of 10. So this is going to be 42 times E to the 0. 0, 0.015 times 10. And when you type that into your calculator, you'll get back um, 48.8. And then remember that this is in thousands. So then this will actually be 48,800 for the population. So F of 10 or the population in 1960 um, is about 48,800. Number two, the revenue of a technology company in thousands of dollars can be modeled with an exponential function whose starting value is 30, uh, 395,000 and T is measured in years after 2010. So we got a couple of things going on here. We're in thousands of dollars. Um, the starting value is 395,000 and the time is years after 2010. <clears throat> so which function predicts exactly 1.2% of the annual growth. And so we want exactly 1.2% so, um, annual growth. So that means one time in, in the year, okay? Or after one year, just getting one year of growth. And so we can either know a couple of these things about what happens when our um, growth factor has an E here, or we can do the same idea we did um, in the previous example, and just take this growth factor and look at it for one year and see what it is. So just plug in E to the 0 0.012 times 1 for T. So it will just look like this. And when you plug this into your calculator, um, you'll get the growth factor for one year. So the growth factor is 1.01207. So the growth rate here, right, is just going to be looking at this part of it and doing this as a decimal, or sorry, as a percent. So 0 0.01207 as a percent is going to be 1.207%. So a little bit more than 1.2%. And then when we do this same idea for the growth factor in this equation, um, and we just do 1.012 to the first power for one year. When you type that into your calculator or when you just look at it, you know it's going to give you back this. 
the exact same number, right? And so then when you're looking at this decimal, 0 0.012, as a percent, that's 1.2% exactly. So this S of T is going to equal a 1.2% annual growth exactly. Where the one with the base of E um, is going to give you a little bit more than 1.2%. Number three, how are the functions F and G given by F of X equals this and G of X equals this similar and how are they different? Um, <clears throat> so this f of x is growing by, um, so it's growing by 5% um, annually. And then the g of x is also growing um, 5%, but this one with the e is growing 5% continuously. So they're both growing by 5%, just a little, just slightly different annually versus, um, versus continuously. So I would say, you know, the growing and the 5% is the same, but then once a year versus continuously growing that much um, for G of X would be a, a little bit different. Number four, a bond is worth $100 and grows in value by 4% each year. Explain why the value of the bond after T years is given by this equation. So we know that the initial amount is that 100. So we have the initial amount times and then the growth factor per year, right? So then we have this 100% plus four for that 4%. So 100% plus the 4% equals 104% growth, which as a decimal is that 1.04. And then to the T, it's only happening every one year. So if you if it's for one year, you'd have to the first power, two years, it would do that twice, have it to the second power, third power, et cetera. Um, and so that would be the correct equation for one time per year. Now this next one says a second bond is worth $100, so still $100. So we've still got this 100 as our initial value. And then this time it says that it grows in value by 2% each half year, okay? So now we've got the growth rate at 2%, so 102% two times per year. So this two to the T, um, because it's happening two times per one year. Um, and so then we have to account for that in the exponent here by putting 2t instead of just t. Um, and then a third bond is worth $100 and it grows um, by 4% each year, but the interest is applied continuously at every moment. So the value of this bond after t years is given by this equation order the bonds from slowest growing to fastest growing and explain how you know. Okay. So our first bond, remember, was just exactly 4% because it was 4% once in the year. Okay. So the first one um, is 4% in one year. So then let's look at the second one here. Um, and that one was the growth factor was 1.02 and then to the 2 times T. So times 1 in this case if we want to look at one year's growth. So if we type in 1.02 to the second power, we get a growth factor after one year of 1.0404. So when we isolate just this part, we see that that's a percent of growth of 4.04%. Or sorry, yes, 4.04% versus this one. The first one was four. So in one year, this one's a little, the second one's a little bit more. So then let's look at this third bond. And this one's growth factor is e to the 0 0.04 times t. So in this case, we'll do times one because we're looking at one year. 
And when we do E to the 0 0.04, we get a growth factor of 1.0408. So when we look at just this percent above 100, um, we're at 4.08% growth in that year. So this would be our fastest growing. So order it from slowest to fastest, it actually is already. First is the slowest, second is the middle, third is the fastest. Number five, the population of a country is growing exponentially, doubling every 50 years. So what is the annual growth rate? Explain or show your reasoning. So we want the annual growth rate. So let's look at the growth factors. We don't care about the population, but it would double every 50 years. Okay, so then we're going to be doing T divided by 50 because it takes 50 years for it to double. So in this first year it would be 1 50th of a double or 2 50ths in the second year, but it would take 50 years to get one doubling time. So then let's take a look at what one year would be. So 1 50th, so 2 to the 1 50th power is going to give us a growth factor of 1.013959. So then when we take a look at this growth rate, okay, so just looking at this part, okay, over 100, and then looking at it as a as a percent. So this 0 0.013959 as a percent, multiply by 100 or move that decimal two places, you get about one percent 396% annual growth. So this would be your annual growth after one year or 1 50th of a doubling period. Number six, which expression has a greater value, log base three of a third or log base B of one over B and explain how you know. Well, remember that the log is telling us three to what power gives us one third. So this is really saying three to what power gives us one third. Well, three to the negative one gives us one third. And then similarly for this next part, it's saying B to what power gives us one over B. Well, it's just the reciprocal. So it's going to be negative one again. So B to the negative one would give us one over B. So negative one is the answer for the first one and the second one. So these are actually the same. Number seven, the expression five times one half to the D models the amount of radioactive substance, substance in nanograms in a sample over the time in D decades. One nanogram is one billionth or one times 10 to the negative nine grams. So what do the five and the one half tell us? Well, the five, right, is the initial amount. So the initial amount of that radioactive substance present. And then the one half is the growth factor. So meaning in this case that it's decreasing at a rate of 50%. B says, when will the sample have less than 0.5 nanograms of radioactive substance? Express your answer in the nearest half decade. So you can kind of plug into that equation. Um, you can also think about this cutting in half. So we started at 5. So half of that would be 2.5. Half of that would be 1.25. Half of that would be 0 0.625. And then half of that um, would be 0 0.3125. And the reason that I look at that is that tells me how many decades or how many half-lives are happening. So this is one decade, two decades, three decades. So sometime after three to the fourth decade um, is when that's happening. So for me, um, this would mean that it's going to happen at like 3.5 decades. And you can plug that into the equation to find out and when you do that, when you plug in um, 3.5, so 5 times 0.5 to the 3.5, you get 0.444, so less than that half nanogram. And that shows you that um, it's happening after three and a half decades. Part C says only um, 
show that only five picograms of substance will remain after one century. So we've got a couple of things happening here. So one century, remember we're measuring in decades. So a century is 100 years or 10 decades. So we're going to be doing 10 half lives. And then we also are looking at the fact that we're looking at picograms, which are smaller than nanograms. Because remember the nano was 1 times 10 to the negative ninth. And now this pico is 1 times 10 to the negative 12th. So if we're looking at 5 picograms, okay, then in nanograms, that's going to be 3 times small or 3 a thousandth smaller, right? So we've got, um, because this is um, 1 times 10 to the negative ninth, and then times 10 to the negative third to get us to negative 12. So when we're talking five picograms, then that's going to move the decimal place back three times. So we're going to be at 0 0.005 nanograms is five picograms. So when we're looking in our equation, this is what we're looking for um, to be less than five picograms. So then let's plug into this equation. So five times one half to the 10th, because remember we're looking at a century. And when we do this, five times um, one half to the 10th power gives us 0 0.004882 um, nanograms, right? So this is nanograms. And so then that's actually less than five picograms, because remember picograms would be this part, would be 0 0.005 for a picogram. And so this is actually, if we just move this decimal place back three places, we'd have 4.8 picograms, um, which is less than five. Number eight, select all true statements about the number E. So E is rational number. That's not true because it never stops and it never terminates. So it's like pi in that sense that you could never write it all the way out. E is approximately 2.718. That's true. That's a decimal approximation. E is an irrational number. It absolutely is. E is between pi, which is approximately 3.14, and square root of 2 on a number line, and square root of 2 is about 1.41. So yes, 2.718 or E would be between those. So this is true. And then E is exactly 2.718. That's not true. Okay, it is not exactly 2.718. It is approximately 2.718.